Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Craig. I'm the CIO at Landsec. So I'm a technologist in a physical bricks and mortar business. Many of you might know what and uh, might not know what Landsec does. We're the UK's largest commercial property company, and we have a portfolio worth over 14 billion pounds. We have 120 separate properties within our portfolio, and we focus on two distinct markets: a London office market and a retail market. So many of you, if you work in London, you'll be a customer of ours in one of our buildings. Iconic buildings like Piccadilly Lights, which we switched off in January, and we're due to switch on a new 4K digital screen in a few weeks' time. In retail, we have the, the best retail destinations across the UK in a number of dominant locations, from Bluewater in Kent, Gunworth Keys in Portsmouth, <coughs> Buchanan Galleries in Glasgow, Trinity and White Rose in Leeds, St. David's in Cardiff, and in a few weeks' time, we're opening Westgate in Oxford. So it'd be great to see you come to Westgate after it launches. But today, I'm not going to talk about bricks and mortar. I'm a technologist, and I'm going to talk about how digital trends will impact all of our businesses in the future. But to understand this, it's very important to think about the journey that we've made to get to automation. This is a graph from Gartner, and this charts the journey we've made from the early era of the web to autonomous business on the right-hand side. Now, when the web was first launched, it's very much a human-to-human -human communication tool. You shared knowledge and you shared information. In the early 2000s, businesses understood what this could mean to them, and they started to transact with people, and the era of e-business and e-commerce grew. In 2005, the launch of the smartphone transformed how businesses interacted with humans, their customers. And the era of digital marketing um, was then born. So where are we today? Well, today we are in the era of digital business. What this means is the physical and digital worlds are starting to merge. We have humans, businesses, and now things all interacting on equal terms to create a digital business ecosystem. Gartner's prediction, 2020, 7.3 billion personal devices, a personal device for every single person on the planet. But you'll have 20 billion internet-connected things. Internet-connected things will outstrip people by four to one. Now, if we move forward 10 years, if we start um, injecting intelligence into those things, we now um, are making um, the, the journey to autonomous business. So that's the landscape that we're in. And it's very easy to actually predict what's going to happen in technology in the future. The difficult bit is understanding how it may impact us and impact our businesses. So I'm going to talk about three digital trends that I think everyone in this room should think about. As I say, we are bricks and mortar business, but we are starting to think about how these digital trends will help us remain a sustainable business over the next 10 and 15 years. The first trend is the digital giants. And it's great we've had a speaker from Amazon on a minute ago. So prediction by 2021, 20% of all activities an individual engages with will involve at least one of the top seven digital giants. Now, currently, these are Alibaba. Alibaba currently makes more transactions than Amazon and eBay put together. We have Beidou, Google, Facebook, Apple, Tencent, and Amazon. 60% of the world's population lives in Asia. So there's plenty of growth for more Asian um, digital giants um, coming um, to the fore over the next few years. So this might not be the top seven by 2021. But there will be um, engagement with digital giants in a lot of things that we do. If you think of the automotive industry, 80% of vehicles will be connected by the end of the decade. Tesla update their cars with software 30 times a week. Tesla actually claim that their vehicles appreciate in value because of the updates that they get rather than depreciate. If you think about the home, again, by the end of the decade, 20% of homes will have over 25 connected devices. 
If I want to switch on my lights, I ask Alexa to do it for me. If I want to make a purchase, I can ask Alexa. I've got an app that I can turn the oven on in my home if I want to preheat it when I'm out. Healthcare. If you think about the impact of wearables on, on healthcare and understanding how, how we behave, but also think about how um, digital, digital twins are getting created for physical medical practices. So basic GP care can now reach far and wide because of using digital technology. Now the challenge I've given my business is what do we do around some of these digital giants? Westgate that's opening in a, in a few weeks' time, that's taken seven years in the planning to build a new shopping center in the UK. If Amazon built a shopping center, would they do the same as we do? Probably not. And the digital giants are already making a headway into coming into bricks and mortar retailing. So Alibaba have recently announced that they're expanding their empire into a mall in China. And we've heard about what Amazon are doing in terms of expanding into more bricks and mortar retailing. The second trend I'd like to talk about is automation. By 2025, one in three jobs will be converted to robots, software, and smart machines. I think this is a conservative estimate. If you think about different sectors and how they're currently impacted around automation, in a few years' time, an insurance policy will not be underwritten by a human. It'll be underwritten by a machine. Why would you need a paralegal to look at case law when you can get a robot to do it within seconds? So you've got to start thinking around how automation can make efficiencies within your business and start creating more value. In retail, this is a headline from CNN, robots could wipe out another six million retail jobs in the future. It's not just around um, a, a software like Amelia or IBM Watson to bring intelligence, um, but it's around how we can um, make our businesses more efficient. But also, if you think about the previous trend around digital giants, you're no longer just um, interacting with humans as your customer, you're interacting with robots and machines as your customer. If Alexa's making purchases on your behalf, then you have to be able to work with those technologies to be able to um, e expand um, and grow, grow your company. John's already highlighted the, um, the work that they're doing around bots, and we're certainly doing that within Landsec in terms of how we're looking to use bots within customer service across our portfolio. The third trend is augmented reality. By 2020, 100 million consumers will shop in AR, and customers will demand more experiential shopping. If you look at the acceleration of Pokemon Go, how easy it was to deploy and the experience it created for people that used the Pokemon Go app. And this is only the start. Many retailers are already experiencing and experimenting um, augmented reality. But I think it's more than just looking at the technology, it's looking around the whole customer experience. Now, I visited a local shopping centre to me, not one of the ones we own, I hasten to add, um, with my wife a few Sundays ago. We wanted to go and see a movie, grab something to eat and do some shopping. We got to the car park, queued to get into the car park because one of them was shut. £14 for four hours parking. One of the lifts in the car park was broken, so we had to go down a back stair to try and find our way to the mall. That wasn't easy. Then my wife went into a retailer to purchase some goods. She selected our product fairly quickly, but then waited 20 minutes to make the transaction. Out of seven possible tills that were open, only two were working. And the customer service staff that were working at those tills spent more time talking to each other than engaging with their customers. My wife, when she walked out of that store, vowed never to visit again. We went to the cinema, enjoyed a movie, and then we came out. Because it was a Sunday, and outside of normal trading hours, half the mall was closed. And we had to navigate our way around the centre with no help to try and find a car again. This is what physical retailing experience can be like. And therefore, we've got to think about how technology can help improve that physical experience 
but also think about if technology is going to be used to try and replicate that physical experience in the virtual and digital world. So in summary, it's very easy to predict these digital trends that are, that are approaching us. What is our responsibility and what's our duty is to understand and transfer those in terms of how they may impact us and our customers. If we navigate the digital landscape and that journey to autom automation well, then we'll all be thriving businesses within the next 5, 10, 15 years. Thank you very much.